Continuous distillation that adds wash and extracts product as liquids from a column, in principle at least, is an approximately adiabatic process, meaning that it doesn't gain or lose heat from its surroundings. It does, however, transfer heat up the column. With that in mind, I initially insulated my columns with a lot of lagging. I use narrow columns that distill slowly and so run distillation over many days. I noticed that product proof tended to be higher in the morning when the still had been running overnight when it's cold than it was in the evening when it had been running during the day when it's warmer. This made some sense because increasing heat loss from the column increases reflux and in other distillation systems reflux is used as a means to increase proof. So I began to remove lagging from the column. Column lagging reduces the power consumption of a still, so as lagging is removed, heating power, in my case steam input, has to increase. The process of optimising steam power by manual adjustment is tedious and time consuming, taking several days. Because of this, the effect of changing the amount of lagging on the column wasn't really apparent until I came up with an automatic way of optimising the amount of steam required to heat the column. My video on controlling columns explains how I do this with a negative feedback loop based on column temperatures. The system pins the temperature of the bottom of the column so as to control the alcohol content of the bottoms. With that fixed by the feedback system, it is possible to observe the effects of changes in the amount of insulation on both power consumption and product proof. In this video, I give my findings. I ran the still with four different levels of insulation. Fully lagged had about a four inch layer of glass fibre insulation around the whole column, which I'm calling lagging level four. Lagging three was the same, but with only half an inch of glass fibre around the top of the rectifying column. Lagging two was with half an inch of lagging around the whole rectifying column. And lagging one was with bare copper pipe for the lower half of the rectifying column and half an inch of lagging for the top, as shown here. In all cases, the dripping column was fully lagged with four inches of glass fibre. Here are the results, showing the power consumption that the feedback system settled on and the alcohol concentration of the resulting product. We can see that at every stage, adding insulation reduces power consumption and it also reduces product proof. And similarly, removing insulation increases power consumption but increases product proof. During the course of this experiment, the ambient temperature in the distillery ranged from about 9 to about 14 degrees centigrade. The results given in my video on column control were obtained using level 1 lagging, which you can tell from the high proof and relatively high power settings given there. This was a serendipitous observation because of the relationship between proof and night versus day distillation. It does make sense because higher heat losses from the lower part of the column equates to more condensation of vapour and shortening of the lower stages, giving more room for the higher isothermal stages. Level 1 lagging leads to around a 50 watt increase in power consumption and as the still runs continuously for weeks that adds up to a significant cost. I've calculated it adds about 10% to the price of producing a litre of alcohol where the total price includes yeast and the materials used to make the wash and energy. That proportion rises further if you are doing multiple distillation runs and whether or not it's worth it is a good question. But if my model is correct, then it will be possible to achieve the same alcohol proof with a lower consumption of power by extending the length of the column, though it's already two metres high, so that might become unwieldy.